Because there was no copyright on Night of the Living Dead, every filmmaker in the world was making zombie movies. Hordes and hordes of terrible, terrible films. Children shouldn't play with dead things. All you gotta do is Google zombie movies in the late 70s, early 80s, and there is, it just, it's a hotbed. It's a mess of Night of the Living Dead ripoffs. There was no stopping it. Another thing that helped the success of Dawn of the Dead was that George Romero was able to skirt around the whole ratings process and release it nationwide unrated. And he's able to do this by putting this little warning on the bottom of the poster saying there, even though there's no explicit sex in the picture, there are graphic images that may be shocking, yada yada, to anyone under 17. This is probably one of the greatest marketing tools of the film. So George Romero had his sequel, Dawn of the Dead. Now as grand and epic as Dawn of the Dead was, it still didn't quite live up to what George Romero had in his mind with the whole concentration camps and the whole military fighting the zombie invasion type films that he was looking for. But it was a start. We now enter 1985. This was a big year in zombie movies. Now it was John Russo's turn to up, step up the bat. And he came out with Return of the Living Dead. George Romero's initial plans were to stay as far away from Night of the Living Dead style as possible, even going as far as taking out the Living Dead in his title and just going Dawn of the Dead. It was one of his many elements he used to separate himself from the original fiasco of Easy Wood. George Romero's is more of a direct sequel storyline. This is what the zombies were doing ten years later. John Russo took an interesting turn. In his reality of the movies were a bit more slapstick and funny. And in his reality of the movie, the movie Night of the Living Dead is actually a movie. You see that movie, Night of the Living Dead? Sure. They ship those bodies. Well, say hello. Based on true events that not a lot of people realize had happened. It worked in the movie! Well, it ain't working now. Bring the movie live! The military was trying to cover up, and these two filmmakers, in the reality of John Russo's Return of the Living Dead, had made a movie, Night of the Living Dead, based on what actually had happened, and that took on a whole different leg of the race. John Russo was off and running with a classic Return of the Living Dead. Send more cops. Now, this was classic, classic camp. The zombies were a completely different feel to them. They were more cartoony. They were like the EC comics, of which was originally inspired by George Romero's work on Creepshow with Stephen King. So he goes back and forth. He's Eternal Living Dead opened up a whole new genre of slightly humorous zombie movies. Now, John Russo captured lightning in a bottle with Return of the Living Dead. People embraced it. People loved it. It was something that no one had ever seen before. The two camps were set, the styles were off, and they were on their way. George Romero loved the military edge, the guns, the whole firepower, that kind of thing. John Russo's films had more of a goth punk kind of feel to them. I don't know if he was trying to appeal to that particular crowd or that was the mentality of the youth at that time. In the Romero camp in 1985, they released a second film in their series. Now, George A. Romero takes us out of the night, beyond the dawn, and into the darkest day of horror the world has ever known. Day of the Dead. There have to be survivors in Washington. Oh, my. They have more sophisticated shelters than this one. Oh, there have to be people in those shelters who know about us, who know where we are. With no radio contact, they'll come looking for us. I said shut up! They can be tricked into being good little girls and boys. The same way we were tricked into it. On the promise of some reward to come. What the fuck is wrong with you people? They're dead! They're fucking dead, and you want to teach them tricks? They have to be rewarded, Captain. Why else will they do what we want them to do? I don't want them to do anything but drop Day of the Dead.
the most eagerly awaited day in horror film history. Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead was huge. Not as huge as Romero would like it to be, but being forced by budget and restraints, I think made the film better. He shot this in Pennsylvania in the uh, caverns, uh, storage caverns, but he used them as underground bunkers for the military. And these films had a lot of, uh, not really hordes of like trying to run away from the zombies, like the Night of the Living Dead had set, but more of a resistance where a hodgepodge of people, people were working with the military, involuntarily for the most part, but were working with the military and humans started to look more like the animals, and they were mean. People started to take a more of a uh, sympathetic look at zombies with Bubba and Frankenstein and his little experiments and trying to coexist with the zombies, which would later appear in future films. So yes, 1985 continued to be a wonderful year for zombie fans. With the height and success of Return of the Living Dead and with George Romero's Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead, things were looking up for the Living Dead which two years later would we go back to the Russo camp and created Return of the Living Dead Part 2. The style is starting to really st show between the two filmmakers. John Russo's Night of the Living Dead Part 2, for the most part, was not as successful as Return of the Living Dead. And it started to become painfully obvious the style difference between the two of them. George Romero would make a wonderful film. Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, but it would be, they would be years apart from each other. John Russo, however, kind of banged out the second sequel, and he tried capturing lightning in a bottle again, and you, you just can't. And while it's funny, it is, it, it is considered the least popular of all of the Living Dead films. But it has a very famous cover, it had a very famous campaign, it, had tried, it captured the same style as Return of the Living Dead, but for whatever reason, it was a little bit more goofy, and it just did not sell as well. Now, 1990. This would be a red letter year for zombie films. <clears throat> George Romero had finally worked it out, all the legal ramifications with John Russo and other invested parties to recreate and remake Night of the Living Dead. With Tom Savini, his number one guy for special effects, sitting in a director chair for the first time. And this film is awesome. They came to pay their respects. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Why do you have to be so cruel? What? Show some respect. Now, they're running for their lives. A biologist in Stockton, California, have released reports focusing on the phenomenon, specifically on that trance-like state. Every shelter is becoming a trap. Are you sure we're going to be all right? Every road out. Don't stop no matter what happens. Is just another dead end. They're coming right for us. George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. It's Night of the Living Dead, Romero style bit bigger, bit more powerful in color, and just a little bit more epic long. The ending is wonderful. You see more of the I Am Legend kind of influence in there with people being the bad guys in the end. This was an excellent move because this color version directed by Tom Savini of Night of the Living Dead, the remake, became the unofficial starting point of Roger Romero's series, followed up by his color version of Dawn of the Dead and later Day of the Dead. Not only did it give an unofficial start to the George Romero series, it brought forth the copyright issues back into Night of the Living Dead and got a little bit of cash back to the guys. 